Good morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord today. Amen. Uh, it's good to be here. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning with Revelational Ministries. Uh, we all like to uh, thank you for taking the time out of your Sunday morning to join us here this morning for the word of God. Bless his holy name today. Amen. Uh, we always have to be thankful, brothers and sisters. We always have to be thankful. Amen. For being alive being a part of the house of the Lord, uh, which is in the house of the living and not amongst the dead. Amen. Bless his holy name today. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. The Bible says, let everything that had breath praise ye the Lord for his praise shall continually, continually be in all of our mouths today. For it is always a blessing, brothers and sisters. It is always a blessing to be counted amongst the living and not amongst the dead. Amen. Let us remember to keep each other's in our prayers. Uh, let us keep the families that are still in bereavement. Amen. In our hearts and prayers as they continue to coop and cope each and every single day. Uh, and I'd be hard to remiss, brothers and sisters. Amen. To always start before I go any further, uh, to give honor to God and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for saving me from my sins and commissioning me to preach his word, which is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ to his people all around the world. Bless his holy name today. Thank you to all of you for logging in and joining us uh, this morning. Uh, we want to thank all of you for being here today. Uh, where you could have joined anywhere else, amen. We thank you, amen, for joining us here at Revelational Ministries. Bless his holy name today. Well, today, brothers and sisters, is a special day. This entire week, uh, can, uh, culminating with this day, is used to honor mothers. Amen. And this is what we're going to do today in the name of the Lord. We're going to go to his word. We're going to see what he says on the matter as it pertains to the importance of mothers in our lives. Bless his holy name today. So for this morning's scripture, brothers and sisters, turn with me to the book of Ephesians. Uh, we're going to go to the book of Ephesians, which is uh, the book of warfare in the New Testament. We're going to go to the book of Ephesians chapter six. Uh, we're going to look at three verses and then we're going to go from there wherever the Lord leads us to go this morning. Bless his holy name today. Amen. If you cannot hear or if there's issue with the sound, please let me know. I will go ahead and adjust the communications on this end. Uh, we want everyone to be able to hear. Amen. This morning. Amen. The word from his uh, from his mouth, brothers and sisters, on what he says about the matter as it pertains to mothers. So first and foremost, we're going to go to Ephesians chapter six, verse one. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. So we'll repeat these again. Uh, verse one, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. That's the book of Ephesians chapter six verse one through three. Amen. May the Lord bless both the hearers and doers of his word. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you, Lord, today to tell you thank you. Before we ask for anything else, Heavenly Father, we want to first give thanks to you, Almighty God, for waking us all up this morning, for starting us on, amen, this brand new day to honor you first and foremost. For it is you, Heavenly Father, that gives us all breath. It is you, Heavenly Father, that provides food and shelter and nourishment for each and every single one of us. And we want to thank you today, Lord, as we pray over all mothers around the world, uh, those past, present, and future. We thank you, Heavenly Father, amen, for protecting them and covering them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray today. Amen, amen, and amen. Yes, brothers and sisters, thank you for joining me and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers all around the world. Bless his holy name today. So first and foremost, brothers and sisters, we're going to stay here in the book of Ephesians just for a moment. And we want to take a look at the backdrop of what is actually taking place here. Now, the Apostle Paul is writing this message to the church at Ephesus, uh, the Ephesians. And what is happening uh, there is they are, are building new churches, new ministries uh, in the name of the Lord. And they are, brothers and sisters, a growing church. They are a growing church, a growing city. And they're wanting to learn more about what it is to serve the almighty God. Now, what we have here, brothers and sisters, is Gentiles. Many of the Ephesians are not Hebrew themselves. Uh, they would be considered Gentiles, meaning individuals uh, that are not 
of the Hebrew faith. So they came to Christ, brothers and sisters, like many of the churches here in the New Testament through the Apostle Paul's teaching by the adaptation or the adopting of Jesus Christ uh, by his blood on the cross. So what they want to know here, brothers and sisters, is how are they going to deal with warfare? Because Paul makes it clear to them, we are not wrestling with flesh and blood. We are wrestling with principalities, uh, wicked powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, it's interesting before he goes into the armor of God. Before he goes into the spiritual warfare as aspect, he gives a commandment, a reminder of what it is we need to do to be prepared for warfare. For those familiar with the military or war in general, uh, obviously soldiers are given orders. They're given uh, resources. They are given weapons. They are given ammunition. They are given uh, firearms to go to attack the enemy, to exploit and expose and to destroy the enemy. But before that takes place, uh, before one boot hits the ground, there needs to be certain levels of preparation. Uh, you will be asked, do you know your general orders? Do you as a soldier, sailor, airman, marine, do you know what your standing orders are? Do you know what the mission is? Do you know what your position is in formation? Do you know what emergency precautions are? Do you know what emergency contingencies are? They will go through a long checklist of items that you need to have. So it's very interesting before Paul gets into the warfare aspect, he first tells the children, before we go out, uh, before we start this attack, before I go into any more detail, I need to first remind you to children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. And then he says, honor your father and your mother. Too many times today, brothers and sisters, we are dividing the two. Uh, the Bible says in Genesis that God created male and female. In his image, he made them. So brothers and sisters, the Lord, the most high, our father in heaven, has both of the attributes of both the male and the female. Why? His word says it. He made them in his image. But too oftentimes we will create uh, a fake God uh, in our image. We believe that uh, he is supposed to look like us. No, we look like him, which is why he tells us very clearly. Uh, you cannot say, brothers and sisters, that you love God whom you have not seen and say that you hate your brother uh, who you see every day or you hate uh, your sister or you hate your mother. Brothers and sisters, it is impossible. Yes, it is an impossibility uh, to stand before the Most High with hatred in your heart for anyone, much less your mother, and still say that we love God. It cannot work that way. Why? Because she was made in the image of Almighty. So there's no way, brothers and sisters, we are going to be able to fool him. We may, we may fool ourselves. Uh, we may fool each other. But you are not going to fool the Most High. He is very clear on that. And he tells the children, before we do anything else, you first must start by honoring your father and your mother. Now, he doesn't say whether or not your mother, you had a good mother or whether you had a personal mother at all in your life. But the reality is you would not exist today. You would not be watching this video today. I wouldn't be speaking in this video today had I not been birthed into the world by a mother. We all need mothers, brothers and sisters. Again, you may not have had the best relationship with your mother, but the requirements according to the Most High says to honor your father and your mother. He did not say honor your good mothers and your good fathers. He did not say honor brothers and sisters, the mom that treats you the favorite or the one that you like or the one that you don't like. We must honor the position, brothers and sisters. Um, all of us, you may not have voted in an election. You may not even care about politics, but there are certain positions in the country that demand respect. Uh, you may work for a company or a boss. You may be a boss yourself. Whether your employees like you or not, they are to honor the position of the CEO because that's the purpose of the position, uh, one of the purposes of the position. We may not like who the president is, our mayors, our governors, our officials, but those positions, brothers and sisters, are to be respected. If not, you lose the fabric of having a nation of any kind of a law. Well, the word of God letting is lets us know today, uh, and it lets us know as children to obey your mothers and your fathers. And we're going to go a step further today. We're going to talk about honoring why it's important to honor mothers, brothers, and sisters. They are one half 
of a two-sided coin. We're going to get to the other half next month for Father's Day. But for right now, we need to honor brothers and sisters, our mothers. But this is why. It tells us why. That it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Brothers and sisters, it seems to imply, there seems to be an implication that if we do not honor our mother and our father, our days may not be long on the earth. You know, many people are sitting down wondering why children are falling away and, and dying at younger and younger ages, why there is so much more rampant crime in our juvenile system. Uh, research shows that around the 19th century, the mid 19th century, which is roughly around 1830, 40 or 1850, just before the Civil War, there was an uptick in juvenile crime across the country. Uh, an uptick uh, sharply. Criminal statistics uh, show that they actually, there was so much problem with it, they wanted to meet, rename them. They did not want to call the juveniles, brothers and sisters, uh, criminal. So they renamed it delinquency. So now they're called juvenile delinquents. Uh, many still don't prefer that name either, but that's the name at the term that they're going to use. But they wanted to find out why. Why was there such an uptick brothers and sisters, in crime amongst the minors, those who are under the age of 18. And researchers concluded that the reason for this uptick in crime was a breakdown of the family unit, a substantial breakdown of the family unit. Now, this cuts across cultural lines. This, this affects all ethnic, uh, all ethnic groups in the United States. There was a breakdown in the family unit as to why there was an uptick in the crime level for those who are minors. The breakdown of the family unit, brothers and sisters, this is the territory that the enemy loves. Uh, the breakdown of the family unit is what the enemy has been trying to do since, brothers and sisters, he was in heaven. He was trying to divide uh, the heavenly family uh, to get them to follow him so that he could make his bid for the throne. Uh, but we know, brothers and sisters, he was cast down by Michael the archangel, along with a third, and now they are down here doing the same thing. Now, he knows he has been rejected from the heavenly positions. The third has been rejected. So his next mission was to attack uh, God's will for earth. Uh, God's will for earth, brothers and sisters, is to establish his will on earth as it is in heaven. He wants to establish his kingdom. Uh, now, he could have chosen angels to do this. He could have chose other supernatural beings, but he wants to build his kingdom on earth through mankind. That is the will of God. So he chose Adam and then he created Eve. He chose them, brothers and sisters, and he gave them dominion over the year. He gave them dominion over the plants and the animals. Now they abdicated their position. They abandoned it. Why? Because of the temptation, brothers and sisters, uh, of the serpent. They both fell. First Eve, then Adam, but they fell as a unit. So now the enemy feels uh, that he's winning because why? He uh, it thwarted the plans of the Most High. So what he did not realize is the Lord always has a backup plan. The most high brothers and sisters is not going to be defeated. So he sent a second Adam. He sent the second Adam brothers and sisters and the last Adam. And we know him by the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ is so unique uh, that we have to take a moment to discuss his uniqueness. Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, is not a mixed breed human being. Uh, he is not a mixed, <clears throat> excuse me, a man and mixed God. He is all man and all God. Uh, the Bible says he is the only begotten son. You see, the father, brothers and sisters, has many sons. He has many sons, many heavenly hosts. Uh, in the book of Job, the Bible says the sons of God approached the throne of the Most High. He has many sons, but he only has one begotten son, begotten because of his uniqueness. So he is the son of God, and he is the son of man. Now, the Lord chose him to bring forth his kingdom because the first Adam fell, the first family fell. Uh, many of us think that's where they got the name the Adams family from because the Adams family is symbol of a dysfunctional family. Well, they, the first Adams family was in the, the uh, Garden of Eden. Well, they failed, brothers and sisters. So the Lord says, I'm going to establish, I'm going to send my son. I'm still going to accomplish my kingdom through man. But this time, instead of taking the rib from the man to create the woman, I'm going to birth this new Adam and the last Adam, 
through a woman. Brothers and sisters, we must honor our mothers because the Bible says the Lord has chosen them to be the vessels, uh, the carriers, brothers and sisters, uh, for future generations. So who did the Lord choose? Uh, did the Lord choose a queen in a palace somewhere? Uh, did he choose a princess of Rome? Uh, did he choose a princess from one of the foreign nations, uh, Canaan or Samaria? No, brothers and sisters. He chose uh, someone not from a wealthy family. He chose someone, brothers and sisters, uh, a young virgin by the name of Mary. He chose her, brothers and sisters, uh, to bring forth a man, the Christ child, the Messiah, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he chose her, brothers and sisters, to bring forth a man, this uh, last hope for humanity. And while, brothers and sisters, she was carrying Jesus Christ, uh, she was nurturing him in her womb. So the Lord is growing in the womb and learning on the go. Researchers estimate, brothers and sisters, that uh, women, as they are with child, the child is learning before the child is even born. Uh, the mother is the first teacher of the child. Uh, before you have any other teachers in elementary school, middle school, high school, or college, your mother is going to be the first teacher, whether she's a good teacher or a bad teacher. She is going to be the first teacher uh, of the child. Now, another interesting point, a very significant point uh, that we need to mention in regards to uh, mothers, brothers and sisters, mothers and women in general uh, are very emotional. They have emotions. Men have emotions. Women have emotions, but their emotions, brothers and sisters, is a focal point in who they are. Now, many of us would look down and say, well, that's a weakness uh, to have to be able to lead with your emotions. Well, whether or not you consider it a weakness, brothers and sisters, it is a fact. Uh, they are very emotional. Now, this can be a good thing uh, or it can be a bad thing. So many people will suggest, well, if she, a man, is around, her environment uh, is an environment built uh, based on toxicity, uh, built on violence, uh, hatred. Guess what? That is going to transfer over to the young child. Remember, the mother is the first teacher of the child. So before we start criticizing the mothers, brothers and sisters, we need to understand if we want future generations of children to be of peace and love and gentleness, this is the environment that we want the mothers to be in. Because if not, whatever they feel is going to transfer over to the next generation. So instead of pointing fingers, it's better to get understanding, brothers and sisters. The Bible says in all our getting to get understanding because we're not going to be able to change them. Uh, men can't change women and women are not going to be able to change men. Why? The Most High created us as the way that we are. Uh, you may decry the fact that the ocean is beautiful. Uh, every time you go to the beach, it is magnificent to look at. And you may be angry with yourself that you can't go out there into the water and do whatever it is you want to do. Why? Because you know there are sharks in the water. Uh, you know there are creatures in the water uh, that can harm you. It's a fact. It's something that you cannot change. Uh, you may love the fact that you can go into the woods and admire the beautiful uh, landscaping and, and creatures that are there. But you also understand that you shouldn't be out there at night uh, because there are wild animals and beasts that are out there. Uh, there are certain facts of nature that we love, brothers and sisters, but things that we cannot change. So instead of pointing fingers at the mothers and, and the women as to why they have emotions, let us, brothers and sisters, find a way, amen, to speak positivity into them. Why? Because they are carriers, brothers and sisters, of the next generation. So Mary is carrying Jesus. She's carrying Jesus, brothers and sisters, and Joseph is there, uh, and she is under siege. Uh, the Bible says Herod, brothers and sisters, was after her. Herod uh, decided that he was going to destroy whoever this new king was by taking revenge on all of the innocent firstborn in the land. So he went out literally uh, to commit infanticide, brothers and sisters, uh, to kill all of the infant children. This is symbolic of what happened in the Old Testament with Moses. You see the enemy, brothers and sisters, is out to kill, steal, and to destroy. If he cannot get to you, he is going to try to get to the next generation. So after fleeing, brothers and sisters, to Egypt, and fleeing from Egypt, brothers and sisters, waiting a while, and then coming back, uh, the Lord continued to grow. He continued to develop, brothers and sisters, in who uh, his mission, who the Lord, the Most High, called him to be. But brothers and sisters, when we look at mothers today, uh, when we look at their personalities, they are built uniquely. Uh, both the men and the women 
uh, have roles to play, not roles to determine who's up and who's down, who's more valuable and who's less valuable. They have specific roles as decreed by the Lord. Uh, so from their birth, brothers and sisters, they have uh, not only their emotions, but they're natural nurturers. Uh, they naturally care, uh, have a heart for children. I remember coming up in school, uh, the female teachers, brothers and sisters, there always seems to have food. Not to say that the male teachers didn't, but there was always a teacher that you knew that always had food there, uh, or they would always, brothers and sisters, give you uh, an extra snack. I remember my grandmother, she was very good at that. Uh, even at Sunday school, brothers and sisters, she would ensure uh, that you were well taken care of. Uh, my mother to this day, she continues to do that, brothers and sisters. Uh, she will always make sure uh, that you have something to eat. She will always ensure uh, that you have some sort of resources about you. Why? It's in their nature, brothers and sisters. It's in their nature. When uh, small birds are building their nest, they build the nest on the outside uh, with a hard foundation built with twigs and sticks and thorns. But on the inside of the nest, they will pepper the inside of the nest with feathers and soft cushions. Why? Because once the eggs come, brothers and sisters, the eggs must be nurtured uh, in a soft environment. Otherwise, not only will it impede their development, they may not develop at all. Too many human beings, brothers and sisters, have not been properly nurtured as children. Uh, you can clearly see that. You can clearly see that in the school systems. You can clearly see that in the prison system, in the world. And if you don't believe me, just turn on the news. Uh, just look at the news feed on your phone. There were too many children, brothers and sisters, that were not brought up in the proper way, which is why it tells us in Ephesians, in the book of warfare, it tells us, obey your parents, children, for this is right. Now, this is interesting. Why is this directed at the children? Why is it directed at the children instead of telling the mothers and the fathers uh, to be who they're called to be? Well, the entire Bible is built towards brothers and sisters telling men and women what to do. So at points, the word of God turns to children. So why is it important as a child? Why, Brother John, should I worry about my mother? She's already birthed me into the world. Um, she may or may not can have children anymore. She's getting older. Why is that? Why does it matter to me? Well, brothers and sisters, the family unit is an engine building for the kingdom of God. Uh, this is not about simply having children. Your parents cover you uh, or someone covers you. Whoever your mother is, whoever it may be a spiritual mother, it may be a godmother, whomever it is, an auntie, a, an older sister, whoever it is that covered you, the Bible says it is the right thing to do for you to turn around and cover them. You see, they honored you, brothers and sisters, by looking after you. Well, when you are older, now you need someone, brothers and sisters, to help cover you. Again, studying warfare, when you watch a military unit take a building or take a hill, all of the men are going to be stacked in formation one after another, and they're stacked uh, to make sure that everyone's blind spot is covered. Uh, we have to make so sure that our 12 o'clock position, our three o'clock position, our six and nine o'clock positions are all covered. Uh, that's why a, a fireman team, it consists of a four man team to cover all four of those positions. Well, brothers and sisters, in our family unit, there is a breakdown. The breakdown is no one brothers and sisters uh, understand, well, many understand uh, that we're lacking, that we need to make sure that we cover our mothers. Uh, they covered us, brothers and sisters. Just because you get older, it does not mean now we have no more responsibility. Now we have no more need to look after them. Why? Because the enemy knows uh, of our value. The enemy knows of our value, uh, not simply to produce children, but to produce information. And we're going to get into this in one second. But many of us uh, are lacking the understanding uh, that brothers and sisters inside a man of a mother's womb are not simply children. And we're going to show you exactly what they are birthing into the world. So turn with me to, to the book of Genesis. Uh, we're not finished with Ephesians yet, but we're going to go briefly to the book of Genesis and expound on why it is important to honor mother. So we're going to go to Genesis chapter 25, and we're going to look at the story 
of Isaac and Rebekah. Now, Isaac, brothers and sisters, the child of promise was brought forth by Abraham and Sarah in their olden years. Now, Isaac was not the firstborn. The firstborn was Ishmael, amen. The, the tribes of Ishmael would come from uh, Ishmael, whereas Isaac, brothers and sisters, would be responsible uh, for the Hebrew lines. But first, after Isaac was married, there was a problem. So we look at uh, chapter 25. Uh, we're going to look here, brothers and sisters, at verse... We're going to go to verse 21. Now, Isaac played with the Lord. He pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren, meaning she could not have children. And the Lord granted his plea and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. But there was a problem. But the children struggled together within her. So she was with child, but there was a problem. And she said, if all is well, why am I like this? So the Lord, so she went to the Lord to inquire of him. And the Lord said to her, Two nations are warring in your womb. Two nations, brothers and sisters. Two peoples shall be separated from your body. One shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. Brothers and sisters, the enemy knows that on the inside of a mother's womb are growing civilizations. She is birthing, brothers and sisters, empires. Mary was not simply carrying Jesus Christ. She was carrying the kingdom, brothers and sisters. She was carrying a whole new civilization of people. The enemy knows of the importance of the mothers, which is why he is after them, brothers and sisters. He is after the women to kill, steal, and to destroy, not just her, but what she is carrying inside of her womb. Now, I hear many people say, well, Brother John, all women are not able to birth children into the world, uh, not human being children, uh, but they are designed, brothers and sisters, every single woman is designed to be a carrier. She is a carrier of information. She is a carrier of resources. Uh, she is a wealth of resources in terms of information, brothers and sisters, of ideas, uh, all sorts of things. And the enemy knows this. The enemy knows, brothers and sisters, that if he can get to her, he is going to get to the seed. Remember the commandment by the Lord in the book of Genesis to all the animals was to what? be fruitful and multiply. And then he created Adam and Eve, and then he blessed them and he told them, be fruitful and multiply. How many of you realize that we produce in life, not by simply the children that we make, we produce in life by the products that we create, the products we create with our hands, uh, our mouth, the ideas that we create. How many of you realize that when a criminal decides to uh, break the law and harm someone else, they are producing more hatred into the world. Uh, it is up to us, brothers and sisters. We can produce goodness into the world or we can produce hatred into the world. Which of the two do you believe the enemy would prefer us produce? Which of the two do you believe the enemy would prefer women incubate, not just in their physical wombs, but in their spiritual wombs? Uh, which of the two do you believe he's interested in ensuring uh, that it does not see the light of day? He does not want the kingdom of heaven uh, to be birthed. Jesus Christ told his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is on the inside of you. Before it makes its physical manifestation into this world, right now it is still in a spiritual state on the inside of us. So the enemy, brothers and sisters, does not want us to honor our mothers because he is after the kingdom. Uh, he cares less about you as an individual. He cares about what God is birthing on the inside of you. What he cared about uh, was not someone named Mary. He cared about what Mary was carrying on the inside of her. Our value, brothers and sisters, is not simply in our ability to procreate human beings. Our value is in our ability to procreate the kingdom of God. This is what he is after, brothers and sisters. And he does not want us to honor our mothers. Why? Because if the family unit can be destroyed, the kingdom can be destroyed. So his, his trick, brothers and sisters, is to get you to believe that just because you may or may not have had a good relationship with your mother, that the position is no, lo uh, no longer worth honoring. And we're going to get to Father's Day next month. It's the exact same way. The enemy wants us to believe, because you may not have had a great relationship with your father, that the position is no longer worth honoring. If he can get you to believe that, 
his job is halfway done because now he is making inroads. He is making inroads and he is getting now his his reinforcements. The, the spiritual imps are now going to be in position to finish the job. So he first wants you uh, to forget or uh, to, 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 to understand that that position is not worth honoring since you may or may not have had a great mother in your life. But the Lord, brothers and sisters, wants us to honor them for another reason. Why? They are made in the image of God. We are not going to be able to tell him, Lord, I love you and I give my life to you, but I hate my mother. Lord, I love you. I give my life to you, but I hate my brother. I hate my sisters. Or Lord, I love you, Jesus Christ. You are first in my life, but I do not like black people. I do not like white people. I do not like Asian people, brothers and sisters. It does not work this way. Why? Because if you hate any of those individuals that I just told you, they are made in the image of God. So how are you telling God that you love him, but you hate someone that is made in his image? Uh, brothers and sisters, we cannot look at our children and tell them, I love you, but I hate your mother or I love you, but I hate your father. They are half and half. They are half of their mother and half of their father. The Lord wants us to understand that children obey your mother and your father. Doing so means you are obeying him. He says, as you do unto the least of me, so as you are doing unto me. Brothers and sisters, when you look at humanity, the physical, uh, not the actions that they're doing, but when you look at their visual prowess, all the diff different skin colors, all the different cultures, this is God's plan. This is his creation. Now, we are not acting the way that he wants us to act. Uh, but when we say we hate half of his equation, when we say, well, we hate men or we hate women, we don't understand what we're saying. You're saying you do not love God. You're saying you hate uh, of the manifestation of who he is. So we need to understand, brothers and sisters, honoring your mothers are extremely, extremely important because they are bringing forth into this world the kingdom. Now, if we turn to the book of Revelation, we're going to see the enemy's full-fledged assault on women, brothers and sisters. Now, we're not talking about what we see and hear uh, in our uh, le uh, literature and debates today on feminism. No, this has nothing to do with that. This, brothers and sisters, is about attacking the family unit. You see, the enemy knows if he can attack the family unit, just as he did in the Garden of Eden, then he can be successful in stopping the return of Christ because he knows when Jesus Christ returns, the enemy is going to be destroyed and defeated forever. So his goal is to continue to attack Israel, to continue to attack the church, to continue to attack the family unit so that he can keep, he can keep this off. Uh, he can thwart it off another thousand years. He can, he can ward it off another 2000 years. But in Revelations 12, we see there is a woman there, brothers and sisters. Revelations 12, one says, now a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head, a garland of 12 stars. So even in Revelation, brothers and sisters, from Genesis to Revelation, women are depicted as containers. They are depicted as carriers, individuals, brothers and sisters, who are bearing forth a man, something very, very important. And then it says, verse two, then being with child, she cried out in labor, and pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads, 10 horns, and seven diadems. This obviously represents, brothers and sisters, the devil. Uh, and the 10 horns are the 10 kingdoms that is prophesied uh, that the Antichrist is going to be able to rule over. But this symbolism, brothers and sisters, let's see what's happening. It says that his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven down to earth. A third of the stars represents a third of the angels. So he has, not only is he coming after the uh, woman by himself, he's bringing back up. And then it says the dragon stood before the woman. So why is this dragon, brothers and sisters, after this woman? We're going to see. Who was ready to give birth to devour her child. So his first intent, brothers and sisters, when he came down here to earth, when he was cast down into earth, uh, he is going to go after the child. Uh, theologians and historians believe this is symbolic of Jesus Christ, of the enemy trying to destroy the Christ child, which is what Herod was trying to do by the killing all of the firstborn. So she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. 
which is Jesus Christ. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. So to caught up brothers and sisters, uh, in Greek, they use the term uh, harpazo or harpazio, which means to be caught up, to be seized up. Uh, many people believe this is another term for the word rapture because the word rapture is not found in this English version of the word of God. But whenever someone is caught up, like Enoch was caught up, uh, the prophet Elijah was caught up, seized up. Uh, it says Noah was caught up, him and his family in the ark to protect them from the flood. So now we see the child caught up, meaning when Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, died and was resurrected, he was brought back to life, he was caught up with the father. So the enemy, brothers and sisters, plan did not work. He thought by having Jesus Christ crucified on the cross that his mission was complete. Uh, but he was not wrong. Jesus, brothers, he was not further from the truth. He rose from the grave. And because he is alive with the father, now the enemy is moving to his second objective. Then it says the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God uh, that she should feed her there 1,260 days. Uh, many believe this translates to three years, three and a half years uh, in Hebrew years. Either way, brothers and sisters, the woman, a man, was caught up and sieged. Many people believe this is a reference to the church uh, being protected during that particular time. And then, brothers and sisters, if we go down to verse 13. So the dragon saw that she had been cast to earth. He persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But why do we have to ask this question? Why is the dragon still after the woman? She clearly already birthed what she was carrying, which was the child. So why, brothers and sisters, is the enemy still after the mothers? Even after your mother has you, the enemy is still launching a full-fledged attack on her. And many will understand, well, well, why? Why she's not birthing any more children? Why is the enemy still on the attack? Well, let's continue reading. So it says, but the woman who was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and a times and a half from the present of the serpent. Another reference, brothers and sisters, to being seized up, to being caught, to be raptured, to be protected. Isaiah 40, 31, those brothers and sisters who wait on the Lord and do not faint, brothers and sisters, shall mount up with wings as eagles. And then he says here, verse 15, so the serpent spewed out water of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. So even though the child has already been born, even though the children are now raised, even though the children are now off to college, the enemy is still trying to attack the mother. Why? And it says here that not only is he attacking, he spewed out of his mouth a flood. So he is trying everything that he can, brothers and sisters, to destroy her. Why? She's carrying something. Now, Noah just read, we didn't double read. Uh, yes, she birthed one child into the world, but there is not, uh, there's more to come. But the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. So as brothers and sisters, the woman was running, as the flood was coming after her, the Lord made a way using the earth uh, to swallow up all of the water. The same way, brothers and sisters, the Hebrews were leaving Egypt and the Egyptians were chasing them. The Lord took the waters and separated them. Amen. He separated them and allowed them to walk on dry ground. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen the bottom of the ocean on a documentary. They're still trying to find it. But the last I checked, the water or the uh, sand underneath the water is muddy. So how was 2 million people able to walk across dry land, brothers and sisters, after the parting of the Red Sea? Only by the power of the Most High. So the water, the flood water uh, that the dragon is spewing at this woman to try to get her was swallowed up. Uh, the Bible says the earth swallowed it up and absorbed it. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. So the, the dragon, brothers and sisters, the enemy is angry. Uh, the enemy is launching a full scale assault of the mothers. And now the next verse is going to tell us why. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, just because uh, a mother's birthing years may be finished. 
she is still a container. She is still a container of information. She is still a container of ideals. She is a container, brothers and sisters, of valuable. She is a container for the kingdom of God. Why? He went to make war with the rest of her offspring. Women in general, brothers and sisters, have the ability to pour into children. They have the ability to pour information into other people. They have information uh, that will be of most use uh, to young children. Many children, well, why do I need to listen to this lady? Why do I need to, brothers and sisters? Uh, they have information that can help us. Uh, they are, amen, the kingdom containers. If someone was to tell you, I need you to look after this building. Uh, I need you to watch this building. I want you to protect it from intruders, uh, from burglars and criminals and everything else. And you probably say, OK, well, I'll do that. But what's inside the building? And you tell them, well, what's inside is money. Uh, there's cash inside. There are jewels and valuables. You're going to say, OK, well, I will definitely protect this building because it sounds like it's a bank. And how many of you would agree that banks, because of what they're holding, uh, they need to be protected. They need to have 24 hour security at the very minimum, a security alarm for the house. Brothers and sisters, how much more valuable are our mothers? They are not simply housing children to be birthed. They are housing many things, much more valuable brothers and sisters uh, than money. They are houses, brothers and sisters, of love and kindness and nurturing and things and wisdom that can be departed into children. It is a blessing to have a mother, a spiritual mother, a godmother, someone who you can call brothers and sisters that will be able to listen to you. Uh, not many people, brothers and sisters, can do that. Uh, many are demanding of the husbands, the wives, and everyone else. Uh, but there's few people in the world that's going to be able to take the place, if anybody is going to be able to take the place of your mother or your spiritual mother, your godmother and auntie, someone, brothers and sisters, uh, that the Lord has appointed you. And if you don't have anyone, he tells us to pray in all things, give thanks and whatever we ask for in his father's name, he says he will do it. So when he sends you someone, it may not be the appearance that you want. Uh, he wants you to understand whoever that mother figure is to honor your mother. Why? Because the enemy is out, brothers and sisters, uh, to destroy. He is out to destroy the man child. He is out to destroy the woman child. He is out to destroy them for two different reasons, for the same reason, but two different ways. Obviously, he wants to destroy uh, the male children because he wants to stop a man, as the Lord says here, a man, anyone that is coming forward with the testimony of Jesus Christ. But he also wants to destroy the woman child because he wants to destroy future containers. He wants to destroy destroy brothers and sisters, future nurturers. He wants to destroy those who are going to be able to have kindness and the gentleness that a child needs to grow. The enemy is out to attack and to destroy the family unit. The family unit, brothers and sisters, is the unit that God has chosen to bring forth his kingdom. And that unit has a mother and a father. And he is telling us here today, we, we set aside this day to remind us here in the United States, because Mother's Day is not particularly celebrated in other parts of the world, but we need it here. We need it here, brothers and sisters, because we need to remember, amen, that one half of the equation uh, is extremely important, not simply for the ability to physically give birth to the children, uh, but to spiritually give birth. Remember, the children are going to produce whatever it is is poured into them. So if goodness and kindness and gentleness are poured into them, it has a very good chance of those children exhibiting those things. But if hatred, brothers and sisters, strife, discord, racism, colorism, and prejudice, and bias, and fear, and phobia, if those are the things that are imparted into the woman while she is with child, then guess what is going to be produced, a man from her, not only her physical womb, but her spiritual womb as well. In warfare, brothers and sisters, in warfare, the enemy, in order to be successful on the battlefield, uh, you have to try to locate and to destroy uh, the enemy. But to do that, you want to get an advantage. You want to find out where their supply units are. Uh, it does you no good to continue to fight the enemy head up, face to face. You need to find the enemy's communications. You need to find their water lines. Uh, you need to find out where they get their food. You need to find out where the reinforcements are going to come from. You need to find that out. And when you do, you need to spend a special envoy. You need to spend a special envoy there to seek and to destroy those things because now uh, you're going to be able to fight a war of attrition and wait the enemy out. The enemy, brothers and sisters, the devil has found out 
where the supply unit is coming from. The devil has found out where the future reinforcements are going to come from. The enemy has found out where the water lines and the food and the resources are going to be produced. And he has found the woman. He has found the mother's brothers and sisters. And the Bible says that the dragon descended down from heaven, down to earth, to launch a special attack after her. Uh, he's not going after everyone else. He is going specifically after her. Why? Because of what she is carrying. She is carrying, brothers and sisters, Christ. Christ is the kingdom. When Jesus came, brothers and sisters, back into Jerusalem, uh, the people said, Hosanna, Hosanna, here comes the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why? Because Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, is the kingdom. He is ushering forth a new civilization. Now, the enemy was not able to get him. He tried to. He tried to kill him, uh, but he rose again. So now he is trying to, brothers and sisters, the Bible says, war against the rest of her offspring. He is warring the rest of her offspring. Why? Those that keep the commandments of God. The enemy is not after everybody. Uh, if you're out there living your truth, doing your own thing, the enemy is not particularly targeting you. He is targeting you if he finds out information that you have something on the inside of you. You have a dream. You have an idea. You have a kingdom building purpose, not building the purposes of this world. Uh, you may reach great heights building things in this world. You may become a billionaire building up the kingdom of darkness. But the moment the enemy finds out that you have something on the inside of you, that the most high is waiting for you to bring forth, now all the targets are going to be on your back. It's just like when a company, when a company goes public, brothers and sisters, now all the investors around the world are going to try to find out what it is, to try to invest into it, and people are going to try to attack it. When the enemy finds out that you have been called, when his name, when your name comes across his desk and he finds out, oh, so you are going to be the one to usher in the kingdom in this area of the world, now he is going to launch his attack. Now you may say to yourself, well, I don't have any purpose. I'm not trying to build anything in the church. It's not about you. It's about what you are carrying. You may run from your calling, but the enemy is not running from you. The enemy is running to you to seek and to kill and to destroy what's on the inside of you. The enemy does not want you, brothers and sisters, uh, but the mothers today, he does not want you bringing forth a man, the calling that the Lord has upon you. He does not want you to raise your children in the admonition of the Lord. Uh, I hear too many times today, even for us, especially from adults, that, well, there is no point in raising my children to do right from wrong. There, there is no point in warning them that, well, if you go out here and live how you want to live, sleep how you want to sleep, uh, they're going to do it anyway. Well, brothers and sisters, the Lord tells us very clearly, people are going to do what they're going to do, but we do not want to abdicate our responsibilities as adults to warn them of those consequences. Adam and Eve abdicated what they were supposed to do. And because of it, they lost their kingship. They lost their queenship. Uh, many, I hear a lot of talk about being kings and queens down here. If you are going to go and live in your divinity, there is no divinity outside of the will of God. We must get inside his will for our life uh, so that we can ascend to the position that he has called us to be. Otherwise, what you're being offering is fool's goals. Uh, the enemy is offering you a fake kingship, a fake queenship. Ownership in this world, brothers and sisters, is not going to last. Uh, the Bible says very clearly, why store up for yourselves things that are going to rust where thieves break in and moths destroy? Store up for yourself heavenly treasures. Invest in heavenly treasures. Some of you right now may not be living right now in five, 10 bedroom homes, uh, but you have been investing in a heavenly mansion. You have been investing in heavenly property. You may not own a nickel of a property down here, but the Bible says if you have been following the will of the most high, you have been investing in heavenly properties. There are properties that you have in heaven that you've never seen and we won't see until that day. Uh, but he's waiting to reveal it because first of all, he does not want the enemy seeing anything. The enemy already knows what's up there. Uh, but the Bible says there is going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And now he's even more worried because as beautiful as the old heaven was, the Bible says there is going to be a new heaven and a new earth. For eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what the Lord has in store for those who love him. So are there are things even more beautiful that the enemy does not even know about. What he does know is he does not want you to walk in it. He does not want you to birth 
into this world, the ideas, that business idea, uh, that dream, whatever it is you're trying to do, that invention, that new creation, that concept, whatever it is that you will have inside your, not just your physical womb, but your spiritual womb, what the Lord has designated for you personally to bring forth. The enemy is out, brothers and sisters, as he is out in Revelation to destroy this woman. Uh, he tried to destroy her physical child. He could not do it. So now he's going to try to destroy all the other offspring. Anything that you bring forth, brothers and sisters, the offspring that you are bringing forth that has anything to do with keeping the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, the enemy is out to destroy all of those offspring. And he is not sleeping. Uh, the enemy is not sleeping, brothers and sisters. The Bible says he is looking to and fro, seeing like a roaring lion, like a roaring lion, to seem to whom he may devour. And the enemy has turned his attention on the family unit. He is targeting his attention on the mother. Why? Because she is bringing forth. Uh, she is bringing forth new offspring. Now we're going to get to next month as to why the enemy uh, is has a different launch of attack against the men. He is only interested in the men who are actively carrying the testimony of Jesus Christ. He's not interested. If you're out there doing your own thing, he's not interested in you. He's not. The moment you find out what your true purpose is, the moment that you find out uh, that you have a testimony of Jesus Christ, now his attention is going to be on you. So for right now, as a woman, as the mothers, he knows what you have inside of you. He knows what you have the capability to do. But the Lord, brothers and sisters, uh, in all of his infinite wisdom, the Bible says from his mouth comes wisdom. He knows how we are to protect them. He, that's why he tells us as children, honor your mother and your father, look after them, cover them, why the enemy is out to launch a full scale attack against them. So while you're off in college doing your thing, don't forget about your mother. While you're off uh, with your new wife, with your new husband, living your life, don't forget about your mother. Uh, you may not have had the best relationship, but the Lord's commandment is clear, brothers and sisters. Uh, his commandment is clear to us all. Uh, and it is he is the final amen on the matter. Uh, whoever he has sent you, uh, perhaps your mother is no longer here. Uh, has he sent you a spiritual mother, uh, a spiritual, uh, a godmother, brothers and sisters, a grandmother, whomever it is, he wants you to honor them, to honor the position and teaching the children to do likewise. If we teach our children that we are only to do good to those who do good to us, again, what profit? The Bible says, what profit is that if we love only those who love us? We are no better than the enemy. If we want to be like our heavenly father, which is what our goal is, he tells us that we need to do as he does, love everybody. Uh, that does not mean you're going to reconcile with everybody because reconciliation is ultimately with him. But he tells us, brothers and sisters, to love you one another, to show filial or brotherly love to one another. We're not going to be able to show arrows to everybody, nor should we. We're not going to be able to do uh, all the things that they want us to do. But he tells us, brothers and sisters, to love you one another. And it starts by honoring our mother, brothers and sisters. Honor her, amen. Care for her. Uh, she gave to you. Uh, she poured into you information. Now, the mother that you have may not be your physical mother, but whoever she is, the position is worth more than worth honoring brothers and sisters, not just for this generation and not just for past generations, for future generations. Because as long as the earth is still here, the Lord has designated the woman to be the carrier, to be the container uh, of the resources to bring forth new offspring into this world, uh, to care for offspring into this world. So even the women that uh, are not having children, they are still designed to care for brothers and sisters, to nurture, to look after the offspring of this world, uh, to look after individuals. It is within their nature. Uh, so we must, brothers and sisters, in order to obey him, we need to do what he says to do, which is to look after them, bless his holy name today. So brothers and sisters, there is a whole lot more, amen, a whole lot more examples of mothers in his word. I encourage you to continue to read, continue to meditate on his word, and we will see purpose there. We will see purpose there for all of us uh, that we have to get outside of the current political debates on who's in charge, the women, the men, the women or the men, uh, who's more important in the household. Instead of understanding that getting caught up in that debate means we are following what the enemy's plans want, which is to destroy the family unit, because his goal is to prevent the kingdom. If the father's will, brothers and sisters, is that his kingdom be established here on earth, 
then the enemy's desire is to destroy it. His, his goal is to destroy it, to keep the kingdom from coming forth. Uh, and the Lord wants us to all to develop a certain aspect of it. He has given us all an opportunity to participate. Uh, so let us participate today by recognizing why we should honor mothers uh, because of how they were created, what they were created to do, and what they can continue to do even after brothers and sisters, uh, whether or not they are physically bearing children into this world. So thank you, amen, for joining me this morning. Um, I continue to encourage all of you, amen, let us stay in our word, especially these days. And we will continue uh, here this coming week uh, with, amen, the seven churches of Revelations and why uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is getting the message out to the churches as to why they need to turn to him, particularly in the days we are today. So thank you all for joining me. Amen. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you today for your word. We thank you today, Heavenly Father, for your testimony uh, that you have imparted onto each and every single one of us today. We thank you, Lord, for the mothers. We pray this morning over all the mothers. We pray, Heavenly Father, for all of the mothers, wherever they are around the world today. We pray for those who are under siege, those who are literally under siege in their homes, those who are under siege, Heavenly Father, across the lands. Uh, for we know, Heavenly Father, that uh, you are an international God. Amen. You are uh, an almighty God. We know that you, Heavenly Father, uh, you, you look down, amen, from your throne, through all the stars, throughout all the solar systems, you look down into the towns and the cities, and you see the mothers that are with child, those who are with child physically, those who are with child spiritually, for they all are carrying something. They are all carrying something, Heavenly Father. They are carrying the kingdom. They are carrying the kingdom of heaven. So we pray and decree, Heavenly Father, uh, that your warring angels are dispatched, uh, that they continue to be dispatched over every mother, Lord, over every mother, young and old. We pray over them in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray your protection from all hurt, harm, and danger. Uh, over them, the seen and the unseen. We pray, Heavenly Father, that the flood uh, that the enemy has dispatched from his mouth, we pray uh, that the earth swallow it up, that the earth continue to swallow up, amen, the plans of the enemy and, and Heavenly Father to send them back uh, from whence they came. So we thank you this morning for your covering. We thank you for your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray today. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining me for this morning's uh, word. Please, uh, today, continue to honor your mothers. Amen. If you do not have a mother to honor, let us honor the position, the position that the Lord has decreed uh, to bring forth, amen, uh, physically and spiritually, his kingdom. Bless his holy name today. Please continue to join us with Revelational Ministries on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Uh, for prayer for intercessory prayer. Please join us on Thursday night at 8 p.m. for Bible study and Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. for the Word of God. Please follow us on Facebook and YouTube for additional uh, Word of God content, additional biblical content. Brothers and sisters, I am Minister John Pickens with Revelational Ministries, and I would like to thank you all for joining me this morning. Amen. And to all the mothers, happy Mother's Day. Have a blessed day and a blessed weekend. Amen.